Hey folks, this is the Yaku Cosmopolitan. The 2023 World Baseball Classic is now only weeks away. I can't believe it, we've all waited so long for this tournament. Six years to be exact, that's the longest we've ever had to wait for a WBC because of the pandemic unfortunately canceling the 2021 tournament, but uh, all 20 teams had their rosters announced just a couple of weeks ago, and I'm sure everyone is excited for the tournament. And so for today's video, I wanted to look back at Samurai Japan's four previous uh, rosters and try to determine if this 2023 group is truly the best that Japan has ever assembled because that's a sentiment that a lot of people have, including myself. So I wanted to make sure that they know this isn't fake news. Is 2023 Samurai Japan really better than the 06 and 09 teams that won it all? At least on paper, because obviously we won't, we won't know if this team lives up to the other ones until they actually play. They're going to have to, you know, put up a really great performance if they want to live up to those teams that won it all. But obviously the competition level has also, you know, really increased with other countries starting to take this tournament more seriously. So uh, you can't really go by just results for uh, what's the best roster they've ever had. But I'm looking here on paper going into this, these tournaments. How did these teams look? So, 06, you had Tomiya Satozaki at catcher, really solid uh, all-around catcher, had a long career with the Chibalote Marines. At this time, he was in the prime of his career. First base was Michihiro Ogasawara, an all-time great, a two-time MVP. Career over 300 average, over 900 OPS, almost 400 home runs. Uh, he is excellent. I mean, I think a modern comp for him is kind of like Freddie Freeman. He's that kind of player. Second base was Tsuyoshi Nishioka, still really young at this time, coming off a breakout season in 2005. Uh, a speedy slap hitter type, you know, hit for a little more power later in his career, but at this time, he wasn't hitting for much power. Uh, but he was a great defender at second base as well. With the Lotte Marines, he did have a short stint with the Minnesota Twins in the early 2010s, didn't have much success there. Uh, and then, yeah, at third base, you had Toshiaki Imae, who was coming off another a breakout season as well in 2005. Great defender, uh, known as kind of a clutch player because he won the Japan Series MVP in 2005, and then he went on to win it again in 2010. Overall, though, if you just look at, you know, the his entire resume for his career, he was solid, but certainly, you know, not one of these guys that I would consider to be uh, that memorable. Uh, at, short, at shortstop, you had Muninori Kawasaki, who obviously everyone loves from his you know days with the Toronto Blue Jays, but let's not forget how great he was with the uh, Daye and SoftBank Hawks for a long time. He idolized Ichiro growing up, so it was just a dream come true for him to be able to play alongside Ichiro. Uh, and he, he was you know he'd play great defense and steal a ton of bases for you. So Kawasaki was uh, a, a great addition to this roster. Left field was Kosuke Fukudome in the prime of his career, one of the best. Uh, Japanese outfielder is of all time. I would say definitely the best Chunichi Dragon of all time. And he kind of struggled in this tournament, but then he went on to win the Central League MVP in 2006. Uh, and then he ended up going to the Chicago Cubs in 2008. So Fukudome, at this point in his career, was, was elite. Nori Aoki was playing center field, coming off a Rookie of the Year and a batting title in 2005 with the Occult Swallows. Another speedy slap hitter, you know, that's a pretty common theme with Samurai Japan uh, in this era. So a lot of guys that have speed and and uh, hit for contact and play great defense. Aoki was definitely at the front and center of that. Uh, and I believe he is top five all time, if not number one, in MPB history and career batting average. And then you add to that the stuff he accomplished in MLB. So uh, Aoki is definitely a, a, a legend in, in, in a way. Right field, Ichiro, don't have to say much there, uh, it's, it's Ichiro, you know, a couple a couple years ago he had set the single season MLB hits record, still a really solid player at this time with the Seattle Mariners, and then at DH you had Nobuhiko Matsunaka of the Hawks, who at this time was an absolute beast and he had a great tournament, started to fall off a few years after the 06 tournament, but uh, you know, at this time, over 300 average, close to 50 home runs. He was, you know, a, 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 an absolute beast. And then their ace was Daisuke Matsuzaka, who, say what you will about him, but Daisuke was 
uh, an absolute monster in at the international level. Obviously won the 2006 and the 2009 WBC MVP, something that nobody else can say that they've won multiple uh, WBC MVPs. I mean, I'll get, I guess we'll see if Marcus Stroman can do it in 2023 now playing for Puerto Rico uh, after switching over from the U.S. But Matsuzaka, this was right before he went to MLB. Still, you know, he had an excellent peak with the Cebu Lions. Obviously, he had injuries that derailed his career, but uh, Daisuke was really good, great. And then, you know, other other notable pitchers on this roster included Shinsuke Watanabe, Koji Uehara, uh, and Akinori Otsuka. So the 06 team was, was really good. A lot of MLB guys here and a lot, a lot of high-caliber NPB All-Stars. In 2009, you had Kenji Jojima taken over at catcher. He had a great decade-long career with the Hawks, great power hitting catcher. At this point in his career, he was coming off a down year with the Seattle Mariners. Uh, but still overall, Jojima, one of the better catchers in Japanese history. Michihiro Ogasawara was still the first baseman, getting a little bit up there in age, but he was still crushing it, had one of the best seasons of his career in 2008. At second base, you had Akinori Iwamura, who had a great career with the Cold Swallows. At this time, he was on the Tampa Bay Rays, and I think he was on that team that made the World Series uh, later that year. Or so, uh, or I guess it was the previous year that the Rays made the World Series. But yeah, uh, Iwamura, really solid all-around uh, player, great hitter certainly. At shortstop, you had Hiroyuki Nakajima, who had some great years there. At his best, he was a guy who could, you know, hit for contact, hit for power. Defense is a little bit iffy, but uh, obviously he also tried out for, uh, he tried to live out the MLB dream a few years down the line, didn't quite work out for him, but Nakajima is still a, a really solid player. I mean, he's still, I think he's still an active player today, uh, although obviously in a very diminished role. Left field was still Kosuke Fukudome. This was uh, right after his debut season with the Chicago Cubs, which was a little bit underwhelming, but um, you know, I'll, I'll talk about him a little bit later when I talk about Seiya Suzuki, actually. Center field still Nori Aoki, and then right field also Ichiro. So two straight tournaments where their outfield was Fukudome, Aoki, and Ichiro. And then at DH, you had Atsunori Inaba, who would go on to become the manager for Samurai Japan after 2013. Uh, at this time, he was coming off uh, a really solid season with the Nippon Ham Fighters, um, 300 plus average, not almost a 900 OPS. So Inaba, you know, I think it was like 35 at the time, but still really good. And then the ace still Daisuke Matsuzaka. Like I said, he won the MVP of this tournament. He also had Yu Darvish and his Hisashi Iwakuma, just to name a few. 2013, though, is probably the weakest team that Japan has ever assembled, uh, not least because they didn't have a single MLB player on this roster. Uh, Ichiro had already decided after 2009 that he was not going to play for the national team anymore, kind of retiring from international play, if you will. And even the MPB guys are we're not really on the level of the previous teams. At catcher, though, um, you had Shinosuke Abe, who's probably the second best catcher, Japanese catcher of all time, behind the late Katsuya Nomura. Shinosuke Abe, you know, 400 plus career home runs, and he was coming off a 2012 Central League MVP and a Japan Series title with the Yomiuri Giants. At first base, you had Inaba, who, you know, was like 40 at the time, so well past his prime. Uh, but they were, you know, picking experience here over, you know, the explosiveness of, of a young, uh, say, like Takia Nakamura, who I think would have been a better option uh, in hindsight. At second base, Takashi Toritani, who had set, like, he, he went on to, like, set the record for most consecutive games played at shortstop with the Hanshin Tigers. Absolute Iron Man. Uh, played second base for this tournament. Uh, at, at third base, you had Nobuhiko Matsuda who is second, I think, among active MPB players right now in home runs, so he would go on to have a really nice career, a lot of, a lot of power upside there. Shortstop, Hayato Sakamoto, this was really when he was starting to come into his own, uh, and then obviously a decade later now, he's probably the best Japanese shortstop of all time. At left field, Sho Nakata, more of a first baseman by trade, but definitely can fill in at, at the corners. Um, a dangerous hitter. I wouldn't necessarily call him a great hitter, but definitely a guy who is a threat every time up just because of the power that he has. At center field, Yoshio Itoi. Um, this was 
right around when he was joining the Oryx Buffaloes after a pretty successful stint with the Nippon Ham Fighters. Great contact guy, pretty solid defense. And then in right field, you had Seiichi Uchikawa, who was also a part of the 09 and 2017 team. So uh, Uchikawa there, um, a, a nice veteran to have, and he was coming off a pretty solid year as well. And then at DH, you actually had Hirokazu Ibata uh, of the Chunichi Dragons, who not a guy you would really think is is going to be a, a DH type because he's you know mostly known for his defensive value in the middle infield, just the slap hitter who kind of bunts a lot. So not definitely not a prototypical DH, but at this tournament he just had he, he was excellent. So um, Ibata, it, it was an interesting case there. Uh, and then their ace at this time was Kenta Maeda, just a, a year or two before he ended up going to the LA Dodgers. This is when he was, you know, dominating with the Hiroshima Carp. And he also had some other notable names like Masahiro Tanaka, Kenji uh, Otanari, and Hirokazu Sawamura on, on this pitching staff. But overall, the, the 2013 group, definitely the weakest that Japan's ever assembled. I mean, they almost got upset by Brazil in the tournament opener. And then obviously... They had a semi-final exit against Puerto Rico. They just kind of lacked a, a little bit of firepower. Getting to the 2017 team, they had uh, Seiji Kobayashi at catcher, who is by far the worst catcher they've ever had on the national team level. Um, but they didn't really have anyone else. And, uh, you know, Kobayashi, defense first guy, and he did have a pretty good tournament. Uh, in fact, he had a great tournament offensively, uncharacteristically so. But on paper, not very good. Just kind of a backup catcher type now with the Yomiri Giants. Uh, Sho Nakata slid over from the outfield to first base here, coming off a, a, a Japan Series title with the Nippon Ham Fighters in 2016. He was a big part of the middle of that order, and really dangerous hitter, a, a lot of raw power there. Second base, Rosuke Kikuchi, you know, never been that great of a hitter overall, but uh, a solid hitter and just elite highlight reel defense. He just won his 10th consecutive Golden Glove Award in 2022. So, you know, obviously he, he, was, he was in his prime at this point in 2017. Uh, the left side of the infield was still the same. Nobuhiko Matsuda and Hayato Sakamoto, both still really quality players at this point. Left field, though, you had Yoshi Tsutsugo, who was the cleanup hitter for this tournament. And, you know, let's not forget how great Tsutsugo was, because obviously he's had... Uh, his his fair share of struggles in MLB, you know, we can't kid ourselves there. But Tsutsugo was a beast in 2016 with the Yokohama Bay Stars. Uh, he hit like 45 bombs with an 1100 OPS. Tsutsugo was a, a really great player at this time, a clutch player also. In center field, he had Shogo Akiyama, another guy like Tsutsugo who, who failed in MLB, but uh, he had just come off a record-setting season in 2015 with the Seibu Lions where he set the single season MPB hits record. So he was a great five-tool type of guy, gives you a lot of contact, a little bit of power, uh, could steal bases, plays excellent defense. Shogo Akiyama, um, I mean, very similar profile to a guy like Aoki. And then, uh, you know, Aoki was in right field, so he was the only MLB player on this team at the time. And yeah, this was the end of his MLB career. 2017 was where it all kind of fell apart for him, but he also spent a little bit of time later in 2017 with the Houston Astros, and he got implicated in that uh, sign-stealing scandal. So this was an interesting time uh, in Aoki's career, but uh, it was definitely important that he was there in 2017 because otherwise they would have gone two straight tournaments without a single MLB player, and uh, you, you don't want that at all. Obviously, it would have been nice if they had Otani on this 2017 team or Yuki Yanagita, but uh, it just didn't work out for them. They were injured. DH, Tetsuro Yamada, probably the best overall player on, on this team at the time. You know, at, at this point in his career, he was consistently hitting over 300 with over 30 home runs and over 30 stolen bases pretty much every year. He did have a down 2017 season, but 2014, 2015... Uh, 20, 2016, 2018, this was really his peak. And so uh, Yamada there, who could have been the starting second baseman, but they had him at DH. And then uh, their ace was Tomiyuki Sugano, having some of the best years of his career there with the Yomiuri Giants, would go on to win uh, multiple MVPs. Kodai Senga was also there. This was kind of his first big audition on the international stage. Obviously took him like six more years to, to make it to MLB, but... Uh, he made the all-world team. Senga was just electric this tournament, yeah, both as a starter and as a reliever. He also had guys like Ayumu Ishikawa and Shota Takeda, 
uh, and Takahiro Norimoto coming off career years. Shintaro Fujinami was also on this team. 2017 was was a good team. I wouldn't put them anywhere near the level of 06 and 09, especially with the MLB guys missing, but uh, they, they were really solid. And then you get to 2023. So Takia Kai expects to be the primary catcher, which, you know, I think it should be Yuhei Nakamura or Takumi Oshiro, as both of them are much better hitters. Kai profiles very similarly to Kobayashi in that they're, they're giving you very little offense, you know, at least on paper. They're just there for their defense, but I would probably take Kai over Kobayashi just because he's an even better defender and he has a little more power in, in that bat. First base, Hotaka Yamakawa uh, had a couple of down years there in 2020 and 2021, but had a revival in 2022, and yeah, he's, he's an absolute beast. He, he had 41 home runs last year, so I wouldn't put him on the level of of Oga Sawara, obviously, who's an all-time great, but Yamakawa, you know, if, if he continues this for another five, six years, and he doesn't fall off again, then Yamakawa can definitely be in that conversation with the guys like Oga Sawara. Uh, second base, Shugo Maki, who I think is maybe the best second baseman Japan's had um, on the national team. Still only 24 years old, a lot of room to grow. I think Iwamura is probably the only guy that um, can stand up to him in terms of the offensive upside. Obviously not that great defensively at second base, but uh, Munitaka Murakami, then you have at the hot corner, you know, not much I can say there. He's the best third baseman Japan's had. Shortstop Hayato Sakamoto would be that guy for the third straight tournament, but, you know, injuries, scandals have kept him out, and instead you have Sosuke Genda, who is an excellent fielder, Defensive wizard, uh, profiles pretty, pretty similarly actually to Muninori Kawasaki in that he can hit for contact and uh, has some speed there, but probably overall the weakest bat that Japan has had at shortstop. Um, and I don't think you can really get away with having a lot of these, you know, slap hitter types anymore. 06 and 09, I mean, totally you could. Their, their whole team was made up of guys like that, right? Because that was the style back then. But nowadays when you're going up against these, you know, high caliber elite velocity uh, MLB guys, I, I worry for a guy like Genda. Uh, and then the outfield, though, is definitely stacks up to the 06 and 09 teams, I think. Masataka Yoshida, Lars Nupar, and Seiya Suzuki. Yoshida coming off, um, you know, a, a Japan Series title with the Oryx Buffaloes last year. Number five all-time in MPB history for players with at least, at least 3,000 plate appearances in terms of weighted runs created plus, so... In terms of the rate stats, Yoshida is just elite. I think the only comp for him is Ichiro in that he hits for a high average, doesn't strike out, uh, and he has uh, some power in that bat too. So we'll see how he does with Boston there here in his first year. But Yoshida is is probably the best uh, left fielder Japan's fielded. Uh, Lars Nupar is, is a wild card. He's definitely a unique case because he's the first non-Japanese born player ever to make the national team. You would probably take... Nori Aoki over him or Shogo Akiyama, but uh, you never know with Nuke Bar, you know, he, he does have a lot of upside. And then Seiya Suzuki, as I was saying earlier, he profiles very similarly to Fukudome, other than that they're opposite hand hitters, because, you know, they had these great careers in Japan, and then they spent one year with the Chicago Cubs, so same team, spent one year with the Chicago Cubs, kind of had an underwhelming start, and then they have this WBC tournament. Hopefully, Seiya is able to have a slightly better MLB career than Fukudome. Not that Fukudome was bad in MLB, he just, you know, I don't think he lived up to his potential. Um, but yeah, Seiya Suzuki, let's not forget how great he was, you know, in 2021 with the Hiroshima Carp. Um, 39 home runs, almost an 1100 OPS, and let's be honest, Seiya Suzuki was robbed of an MVP award there when the Carp were winning. Uh, all those pennants uh, in 2017-2018, in, in Seiya Suzuki definitely should have had uh, a, a, an MVP in there. Um, DH Shohei Otani, you know, again, not much I can say here. It's it's hard to top Otani. Probably the, he's definitely one of the most historic players of all time. Not just Japanese players, but just all, all time, just any player. He's one of the most historic ever, and he's going to be pitching and DHing at this tournament. And then their ace will be Yoshinobu Yamamoto, but obviously they have a ton of other guys like Yu Darvish, Roki Sasaki. And the bullpen is just a completely different beast in 2023. This is this is a super bullpen that they have, uh, especially with how many young flamethrowers that they have here. So 
The 2023 group is the youngest ever as well, average age of 26.5, which compared to all these other teams that had a lot of you know older veterans in there, uh, th th they stand out a lot. And Yu Darvish is the oldest guy at 36. He's the only holdover from 2009. Yuki Matsui is um, one of the only other holdovers from 2017 even. They only have like two guys from the 2017 team on this roster. Uh, so it's just a complete new group of guys. And I think uh, Hideki, Hideki uh, Kuriyama has really put his money where his mouth is and that he wants a young team with a lot of explosive upside. Um, they might have a lower floor than the previous teams because so many of them are inexperienced at the international level. But at the end of the day, this is the World Baseball Classic and every team, with the exception of the U.S., is fielding some of the best players that they've, you know, that they have. So um, you need to construct a roster that can win it all. And I think they've done that in 2023. Again, in terms of results, we won't know yet uh, if, they, if they live up to the 06 or 09 teams. But on paper... With the exception of catcher, uh, shortstop, you could probably make the case for every position being uh, either equal to or better than any other predecessors. So we'll see what happens. But uh, let me know what you guys think about the 2023 group relative to the previous teams that they have had in the comments below. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe for more MPB and WBC content in English.